Okay, what I'm going to do is from start to finish, we're going to make a little live edge ball. Now, the reason I'm doing it is because a lot of people I see on the on the different uh, groups and so on, uh, they say they're just into turning, just starting, and uh, they ask a couple of questions about you know how to turn a ball, how to do a live edge, how to do normal edge ball um, and what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and do this in one go I'm not going to speed up the video for posting we'll try and get it done in half an hour or something and I'm going to describe this little bit of wood and we're only going to use uh, a couple of tools when you're starting off you're not going to have tons of tools um, I'm going to take for granted though that you've got a chuck uh, I'm going to take for granted um, that you have a means of holding a rough bit of wood on the chuck. Now, the way I use I do that is um, through a little screw like this, um, and it fits inside the chuck. Obviously, other ways is you could have it between points. Um, with a, with a drive centre or or, or, a, or a step centre like this, um, but we're going to go for the screw because then it'll be able to freely be held on the on the chuck. Now, what you do, obviously, have a look at the piece of wood. It's just obviously. A uh, trunk of wood, obviously just cut in half. Now, the purist out there would say you wouldn't cut it straight in half because you've got the pith there, which is the hard bit. Uh, and then as you gradually get out, you've got the sap wood here, which is softer. Normally that cracks. Um, when I cut this up, oh, ages ago, uh, I painted the ends. So it hasn't done too bad, but there is a crack there. Now, you could argue, oh, there's a crack there. You shouldn't spin this up, but I don't think that crack goes very deep. It certainly doesn't come through the other side. Um, I'll show you another bit. There's another one, and you'll notice we've got, well, we've got three cracks there. And if you turn it over, we've got at least one crack there. So that crack goes all the way through the other side. Now, if I start spinning this, who's to say that's not going to fly off it aimed at me? So this one, disappointing, but I'll probably be cutting this up for maybe. Um, into a little handle or pen blanks. Alright, so we're going to use this one. Now you'll notice that that is pretty square. If it was more rectangular, I'd be thinking, right, I'll trim maybe both ends off to get it to this shape. So you kind of want to start with something which is quite square. And of course you want to find the middle. Now, we're not going to find the middle on that side. What we're actually going to start with is that side. And this is going to go in there. Because this is going to be the top of the ball. And then we're going to scoop out the middle of the ball. And that and leave this bark on the top, giving it the live edge effect. So that is actually the bottom of the ball. So it's this side we're going to turn down first. We're going to get that smooth. Um, curved out and that's going to have uh, the mortise on it now obviously you can do a mortise or a tenon the mortise is when it's um, a recess in the wood and the chuck jaws open up inside that to hold it um, the tenon is when it sticks out and the jaws will clamp down now this particular chuck close this up the smallest it goes that now what is that well that on this one is about there 49 let's say 50 millimeters so the mortise the recess in this which that is going to fit into and then open up to grip that's got to be bigger than 50 so let's say we'll make that up to 
So if I just lock that down, um, I know for a fact that that is what, it, you know, at least I want in there. So that then we can turn it around, chop it off and turn this down. Okay, so the first thing I've got to do is to drill a hole in there. Now, I know if I use my 10 milli drill bit, this will go in. Easier said than done. What's that? 10 milli. Really should, right on here. Something. Okay, there you go, 10 milli. I forgot my glasses, it's where I've been. Right. If you're going to do a normal ball with a nice smooth edge, you would put the hole there. And you would just use a center finder to get your best guess. Uh, here's mine that I made. Um, and all I'm doing is trying to get the circle, these, these marks on here, try and get the circle, the biggest circle, into this bit of wood. And it would probably be probably be somewhere like that so I would get something like a center punch and that would be where I would drill my hole stick that in it stick it in there and jobs are good we don't need to use that At the same time it's quite hard on a curved surface so I'm just gonna eyeball it and I'm just kind of looking I'm looking at this you see I want to be honest I'd want as much of this as possible that's like the real hardwood here's the sap wood but just for this little demo we'll put it about there okay so that's where I'm gonna try I'm gonna drill I'm gonna put this into the chuck so I don't lose it. Drill a hole in here. I'll get a new battery, shall I? That'll do. Now that's going to go under there. Now some people turn, if they've got lathes which can run at a slow speed, uh, a bit of a hero move, like, but they'll, they'll turn that on and then they'll stick this on and it'll drill, you know, drill itself in. And then the last minute to leave loose. You won't catch me doing that. Now you just tighten this up until your jaws are pressing hard against this. Now needless to say, you could go on the bandsaw or oh, hand saw and take these corners off, which you should do because it's going to be less bangy. But because I'm going to start in here and work outwards, it's not too bad. I'm going to take these corners off from that direction. I'm not going to take the corners off from this direction because it's horrible. Right? You're doing that all the time and it's hard work. You can do it, but it's not enjoyable. So that's pretty good, that's tight on there. I know the chuck's tight on there. Um, I'm gonna spin this up. 
certainly get a smooth edge on here, take it round, and we'll get that mortise in. Now, what, what tools am I going to use? Well, we're going to have a gouge and a skew, and that's about it. All right. Uh, the gouge I'm going to go for. Um, like a three quarter, three quarter um, ish. Now it's got the either the Irish grind or the what I call the Ellsworth grind, um, but it's got the relief on the back. Now, if you watch Eddie Castle and talk about the Ellsworth grind with the relief, which um, I think it was Elliot Eversera who came up with that. And it just give, takes a little bit of that metal away so that you can get in better. So I could use that one. Here's another example. One of my particular favourites and my favourite one. Uh, so either way, fine. This is more like a bowl gouge. It's deeper fluted. That's more like a spindle gouge. It's shallower. But to be honest, um, for a simple starting bowl like this, really both will be fine i want to go with this one it's my favorite i'm going to put my long handle on this but you imagine you've got your gouge um make sure it's sharp of course bottom line wood turning is much more fun If your tools are sharp. Spin it. It doesn't hit that. We're going to get this closer. As close as we can. Obviously a little piece. So it's not jumping all over. Uh, but let's try and tidy this up. Outside, moving in. Tool rest at a good height, so I'm not doing this to get to the centre there. see that edge there where I'm hitting because some of it's air some of it's wood and you can kind of see through it I can see through that edge to the other side of the lake so you don't dive in you get a shot just going slowly and eventually you'll feel it there I feel it talk about writing the bevel uh, what that means basically that's your bevel there's your cutting edge writing the bevel means the cutting edge is cutting the wood but this edge the bevel is also pressing onto the wood now what's the benefits of that well that supports you it keeps the stu keeps the tool in the right position if you just have that edge on you're gonna you could be wobbling all over the place keeping that on allows you to try and get a smoother cut so along here it will be smoother you could ride the bevel and have no contact there all I'm doing is riding that bevel I twist it 
twist it, nothing, twist it, nothing, twist it, nothing, twist, So what we're doing here, that, trust me, although you can see some lines there, that is smooth. What I'm going to do now is going to change direction a bit and we're going to come out this way. And we're going to try and come out and curve it a bit and start taking some of this off. Alright? Now I'm only going to start here. I'm going to start here and come out a bit. And then once I'm happy with that, we'll do that mortise. And you can still ride the bevel exactly the same. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Open. Now we're getting a bit far over the breast. So I'm going to move in, put it at an angle. Which less overhand, safer, less vibration. Don't want to try and take too much wood off. Look at the size of that. Now I could try and be the hero and try and push into there as hard as I can and take off, you know, five, six, seven mil. No, I'm going to come out, step it out, and take less. Come back, pick it up. Come back, pick it up. Look at the gap, big, turn it down. Got to do the same thing. So, so far, 
we've smoothed that off remember and we've started to turn this round and you're starting to get the shape of your ball now live edge ball it has that typical sort of dip on the sides and you decide how low you want that to be i could leave it that low i could finish this bottom off and there we could have a ball and you're maximizing the diameter of that ball but that the sides are going to be very shallow so depending on what people want to put in the ball keys coins things like that you're going to have it's going to have very shallow sides now having a look around at this i can notice that that one crack that we thought wasn't very deep it's still there now what i tend to do uh, i just want to make you know give myself a chance here I'm just going to fill that with a bit of CA. That will strengthen it up a bit. A little bit of activator. Now looking at the, also looking at the sap wood, it's very soft there. All right. So it's, it's not bad there, but these edges pretty poor so i can make this dip less of a dip by taking more off here so we're going to raise it up a bit so i am going to take quite a bit more off um and you'll see the difference Speed it up a bit. Teach yourself to turn with both hands. It makes life a lot easier. I, I hate it. You know, I'm a left-handed, so I used to hate coming in like this. I would try and come around here and bend my back and all sorts. No, I made myself get used to turning like this. Okay, that crack is getting smaller, which obviously means it's going to stop. Um, the condition of the sapwood here is pretty poor, um, but it doesn't matter. It's the technique of what I'm trying to show you. Now, what do I do with this bottom? I'm going to put a tenon in. Sorry, I'm going to put a mortise in. Um, and don't forget it's got to be bigger than that measurement. We're going to get that nice, take the centre out a bit, um, drill out the little circle where I put my little logo. Um, and we'll see how it is. But I probably won't. Probably won't do the little logo. I'll just put the mortise in and see how it goes. Now, some of this live edge is flying off. Okay. But we'll see how how we we'll get. Um, let's put that mortise in. Now, how to do the mortise? Uh, most people would have some form of uh, cut off tool. So I'm going to use uh, my cut off tool to do the mortise. Now, my cut off tool happens to be this, but the HSS steel I bought. It was rectangle, and I've you know I cut it down. Got a nice point on it there. Um, and I'm going to try and use that to put a mortise. What else would I use? I could use my diamond tool. Well, it's not a diamond tool, really. It's just a two-pointed tool. 
Um, so that could be used. What else could be used? Um, some people have carbide diamond tips that could be used. Anything. Basically, I just want to go straight in. Straight in, and then I'm going to cut in a slight dovetail. Now, the size of it need to be like that. Okay? So, we're not far off. Um, any, anything smaller on this bottom, I'd have to use smaller chuck. Uh, but we'll go with that um, and cut it in. So I've gone in a little bit, gonna come in again. All right, now I'm just gonna take this out. Again, get back out. Got a little bit of pattern work on. Now I said we're not going to use loads of tools. So I'm just going to use this at a slight angle. One, two, three, four. I've got four kicks. Right. So I put a little bit of a dovetail in. Uh, so we could use again that tool. something for the jaws to grip onto. That's the bit that's going to 
sit on the floor, on the table, whatever. Now you don't want it to be wobbly. So I'm just going to bring it in. Little cup. Nice little finishing cup. Then we're going to try and bring it around here to smooth that off. Nice slow finishing cut. I'm not worried about this. We'll get that one and turn it around. What I'm going to do with this now sand it up a bit, burnish it, we're not going to mess around with lots of different finishes, we're going to burnish it, put a bit of oil on, done. I'm going to use loads of paper here, uh, so that one's 240. Spend ages on this if you want. But all I'm showing you is simple technique to get a live edge draw. Now what I mean by burnishing it, I'm going to spin this up fast, just going to get a pile of shavings, and press it in. Be careful, but it gives as good a finish sometimes as anything. It will get hot. Careful. See, it's got hot, it's got a black line on it. I'll say I wanted that, shall I? <laughs> Alright. For the oil, it happens to be uh, linseed oil. And there. Now how's that? All right, dead quick. We're going to take it off the screw chuck. Let's have a look. Not too bad. Little bottom there. I'm going to turn that round. Chuck it. There we go. I'm pressing. I'm opening slowly. Once it starts to bite. Turn it round, go to the other hole and chuck. Twist it a little bit. Turn it round, twist it. Turn it round, twist it. Don't go too far. Don't go mad. If you've done your dovetail correctly, you won't need that crazy tight for something little like this. Okay. So we're going to spin this up. I'm going to start by hollowing it out. 
and then we're going to finish off the sides okay so again because you've got the hole where this the the screw chuck was in that's going to help you because we're going to come in here again kind of ride the bell we're going to dig it out and when it gets to the center there's no little middle bit that you've got to get rid of it's already gone now just be careful of the live edge bits are going to be flying around probably So we're doing okay we're going to dig in here i'm going to go deeper more straight in and the chisel's going to be it's going to be right out here trying to dig in deep and then swing round but we should start to be thinking about depth and it depends on how deep you made that mortise if you put another recess in the middle for uh, a little badge or anything because this is where you go too deep and you go straight through and people say you've made a nice funnel well let's say we'll go a bit further and I think we're good for a little bit more got quite a thick edge here as well I'm going to take it out get in a bit deeper so look at that where the handle is right over there quite open I'm cutting, cutting along that edge. At some point, I'm going to get my turn it out and start using that edge. But at the minute, it's that one. I'm going to bring this out, different approach, and I'm using more of more of that bit. Now completely different angle and I'm going to see if I can ride the bevel a bit straight across. Alright, so just having the feel of it. A little bit bumpy on the sides. Uh, that crack that we saw earlier, it is inside there. I'm not worried that this ball's gonna explode on me, but when, if you want to do your finishing cuts, uh, we might need to fill that in a, and glue it a bit. All a bit hairy around here. It's not a brilliant live edge ball, but the, the, the technique isn't too bad. What we're gonna do 
is we're going to take this down on the outside a bit to match you know the bottom that would rounded round just going to move the tool rest a bit Again, approach slowly. I don't know where everything is yet. There it is. Just gonna do a few shear cuts using that part of the blade. Just pulling it towards you. I'm cutting but I'm actually looking on this side and I'm looking at the profile and the shape Too bad. We've lost quite a bit of bark around here. We've gone a bit too thin, to be honest. Well, it's okay. I'm gonna sand it up. See what it's like. I think we can go a lot deeper as well. So I'm gonna take out some more of that, and then we'll sand it up, smooth it off if we can, uh, burnish it, oil it. Job done. Out. Now I'm going to put a skew chisel in, one inch, just going to do a little bit of shaping. down get some sample there. one twenty be careful the live egg That's so hard this time, huh?
Alright, let's put some oil on. All right, there we go. The method, although this was quick and cheerful, is the same for all of them. So you got little ball Still got the mortise in. Live edge, not much of a live edge. <laughs> but you can see, we could have done it differently and left more of it on. It's a bit hairy. And obviously not a full finish on there. <laughs> Little live edge ball.